Hi, this is Frank Carmody. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at um, changing our um, uh, logo in Joomla. So uh, we have our Afterburner 2 template that we've downloaded from Rocket Theme. Um, and it's a limited template. It's been streamlined, so there are fewer um, options, but it will load everywhere, and it's very, very, very fast. So, so okay, so we have our uh, home page here. So we have our tab here uh, open with our home page. We have our... Um, our administrative backend that we've logged into. Okay, these are all off the demo uh, link off joomla.org. Um, okay, so let's go back in and we're going to go to the um, uh, template manager. So that's under extensions. Okay, and we're going to actually go in. Now there's a couple things on this screen here. So under these used to be tabs in previous version, the styles and templates. Okay, styles is kind of a, a GUI interface to uh, to change things about the template, the options that come with the template, and then the templates uh, link is where you can actually go in and change the code. So that they're kind of identical things listed here. So if I go into the templates link, notice that we can actually get to a point where we can um, we can edit the actual PHP of the template. Okay, so if there's something specific that you want to add that you want to change in here. <laughs> uh, this is where it would be. Um, the other thing that you can do uh, is you can actually go in and um, edit some of the CSS that's in here as well. So we can go in and edit the CSS as well. Um, okay, so but we're not going to do that right now. So that's under the uh, when we're in the extensions template manager, and then we click on templates. That's what we get. We're going to concentrate in the styles area. So we click on styles. This is where we're at. Let's click on the Afterburner 2 default um, uh, template. Okay. Okay, now we have a logo right now. It's in position top A, right? And it's right now it's the type is Afterburner 2 template. Okay, now what does top A mean? Okay, well, top A means if we go over to layouts right here, you'll notice that there are a lot of positions that we can change. Okay, now there are other positions on the page that we, uh, we can um, use, but these are the positions that we can change in this uh, template manager. Okay, so the top positions here, top, header, main body, bottom, footer. So what these correspond to is on our home page, the top is going to be at the top up here, the header is going to be next down below. Okay, then there's going to be a main, main body area which is right here. And then down at the bottom we're going to have our footer um, section. Okay, bottom and footer sections. And um, this just allows us to, you know, change the number of columns, basically, and the way that those columns are laid out uh, in each one of those sections. It's very useful in laying out content. Okay, so, uh, so for example, right now, our, uh, our logo is in top A, so that's, you know, the top on the left here. And our menu, if we go back to here, our menu is in uh, header A. So notice that header A is right below top A. Uh, and you, these are these. Um, you really have to kind of get used to using these, so um, uh, they can be a bit difficult to use. Um, okay, so let's go ahead, and uh, the way that we're going to go, the way that we're going to create our logo is that we're actually going to use this snipping tool. Okay, uh, and I've found that the easiest way to make a logo is to actually have a sample to start with. So you kind of take a rough area of the screen. So how big do we want our logo? Okay, and I'm going to say we want a fairly large logo that's going to be about this big. Okay, and I'm going to save that as a capture logo okay, to my desktop. All right, so we have that to start out with. And then what we're going to do is we're going to actually go to um, pixlr.com. Okay, so we're actually going to make the logo now. So we're on pixlr.com. We're going to go to their advanced photo editor. We're going to do... Uh, uh, open an image from computer, and I'm actually going to open that capture logo there. Okay, so we have a 600 by 900 pixels. Okay, so now we're going to create a new image, also 600 by 900 pixels. Okay, now our 600 by 90 pixels. Now yours might be different. Okay, Call it logo. And I'm going to make a new dad, new dad boot camp site. So, uh, so that's going to be the logo. So we're going to create a boot camp for new dads. Um, 
because I have kids, so and I could have used a boot camp. <laughs> so, okay, <clears throat> Soren Pixlr, and Pixlr works a little bit oddly, okay, to say the least. Um, it's a it's a great program. Uh, it's built, you know, it's very similar to like Macrame or not Macrame to Adobe Fireworks or something like that. Uh, what you'll find though is that. Um, so, for example, the layers really matter in here, so pay attention to this layer uh, system. So, what I usually do is I take the background uh, and actually I'm going to re undo here. Okay, so uh, usually what I want to do is I want to create, when I create this, um, so I'm going to do new image, I want to make it transparent, and I'm going to make it 600 by 90. Okay, so that's the first thing is I want to make it transparent. Okay, so a good strategy for me is that I make the, the image transparent to start off with and then I don't draw anything on the background. And that's let me that lets me get to back to this transparent checkerboard pattern anytime I like. So I create a the first I create a, a layer on top of the layer zero or the background. Then I'm going to go ahead and add content onto that layer. Okay. So the, f the reason why the screenshot was great that I took off the After Diverner 2 um, uh, template is that now I can um, recreate the color scheme of that template. So I don't have to wonder what this color is. You know, it's not black, it's not gray. It's kind of a dark, super dark blue-ish, grayish black. Uh, and we don't have to worry because what I just did was I sampled it using this dropper. So basically I went back to my captured logo. I sampled it. That gives me the color this main color is now that that uh, sampled color and now I can fill that in with the bucket on the thing I just drew so notice now I've matched the color background um, now you might ask well why don't you just make a um, a uh, a transparent logo that can cause problems remember we're in a complicated web application so you it might be very difficult and I can tell you for a fact I tried a transparent logo and uh, this red dot does not go away when you change the logo. So this red dot is not part of the logo. Interestingly enough, it's part of the something. It's part of the code in the template. So it's a mistake by the developer. And you have a choice. Do I go in and find that mistake and fix it? Or do I just create a logo that is not transparent and cover it up? Uh, and I go with cover it up, especially for the novice user. So, um, OK, so next thing we're going to do here is we're going to make our, our, um, our A logo okay so and now actually I've made this logo already uh, so if this looks like it's easy for me it's because of the fact that I already made it and it took me a long time to do so um, so notice our blue box there see how when I when I make this font bigger notice how my blue box gets bigger so I can kind of see how big it's gonna get and then I'm just gonna make it a kind of a white color here and that's this all F's, F, 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 F. That's white. Okay, so we got our, uh, our kind of our first part of our logo. And now we want our new dad. Okay, so we're going to do our new. Okay, we're going to make that white too. I could just type it in if I wanted. F, 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 F. Okay, and we want it kind of smaller, right? So we want it about... And this might take a little uh, finagling here. So notice that new in the layers, you have to select the layer before you can move it around. So I selected new. I'm going to move that down. And then I'm actually going to go in and edit it, which means the layer has to be selected. And I have to select the text, uh, text piece there, or the text tool. And then I'm going to just slowly get it down to about half the size there. And impact isn't doing it for me, so I'm going to go to back to Verdana because I like the classics. <laughs> Make it bold Verdana, uh, quite a classic. I'm actually up. Oh, see, so I have to select boot camp first, and then I can go back and edit. I'm going to make boot camp a little bit larger. Click OK. Because remember, we wanted a big logo here. Go back up to new. Copy, oops, I'm going to actually duplicate this layer. Okay, so now I have my duplicate new. 
And now I'm going to edit that to make that dad. Oops. Okay, so we got kind of our we got kind of a logo going. You remember logos? You can go back and change these around if you want. And then finally, we're going to go and get our kind of our icon, you know, our kind of our obligatory icon on our logo. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so we go to Google, and we're going to go to Google Images, and we're going to go to we're going to search on flag first. Now, how do I know that I'm allowed to use an image? Well, I'm going to trust Google. That's what I'm going to do. I don't have any money for this project, so uh, let's go to um, the Google. So I went to Advanced Image Search. I have flag. I want a black and white image, and I want the, the licensing right. I want it to free to share or use. You can add even commercially. We're not doing commercially, so... And we're going to trust that Google knows what it's doing. Okay, so we're going to take this flag, and we're going to find kind of a... A, um, generic flag icon hopefully here okay and I did this search earlier and actually wouldn't you know it I found the flag that I wanted to use okay so basically these these images are all licensed for you to use uh, without paying according to Google okay and I think we can trust Google I would document it that you got it off of the Google image search and that you searched it with no license required uh, in case anybody comes back to you about it um, but according to Google these are okay to use so uh, I'll trust Google um, for images uh, okay so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna open up the the one that I found earlier um, okay and that was this image and all I did was I went to the adjustment. I need a black version of this, right? So I went to brightness it, and I made it 100% bright. Okay, then I went ahead and I'm going to go ahead and size it. So notice we constrain the proportions. And we want it just, just a little bit less than our height. So we're going to make it 80. Okay, and then I'm going to select all. And then we're going to edit paste your copy and paste won't work in here Oops, and I'm gonna crash it <clears throat> okay so open image as layer okay that's what I should have done in the first place so we're gonna go ahead and save this black flag image then we're gonna open image as layer so we're gonna go save and we're gonna call this black flag white or white flag okay and we're gonna save it okay and a good way to do this is just to go uh, edit or image layer open image as layer and we're gonna go find our white flag and there it is. Okay, so now we have our, our uh, a pretty good looking logo here. Um, so the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to tr I'm just going to try to trim off the extra canvas here. So we go image canvas size. We trim. This is where you're going to trim from. So you're trimming from the right hand side. And we're going to go ahead and trim off a uh, hundred pixels. Let's see if that works. And there we kind of have it. Um, I don't like, we want to have a little bit of area on the left hand side. The reason I'm doing it like this is it's a real pain to move everything in Pixlr. Okay, so you'd have to select each layer and then move it around. Um, I think, I'm sure there's an easier way to do it. Okay, so we have our logo there. So we're going to save it. Now we want to save it in two ways. So we want to save it for use. Okay, so we want to save it as our JPEG. Okay, JPEG, that gives us the smallest size, good good quality and we're not worried about uh, transparency uh, so we don't need a PNG or a GIF um, so we don't need a transparent image so JPEGs are best best value then for the size and quality so we're gonna go ahead and save that also 
Now don't get fooled. So in web design, you always need two versions of images. You need the one you're going to use on your website. That's the flattened image, the JPEG. You also need whatever editor you're using. So in this case, we're using Pixlr. We need a we need a, uh, an image that we can come back in and edit. Say we want to change the text. Well, I can't change the text in a JPEG, but I can change the text in this PXD layered pixel image, okay, pixel Pixlr image. So whatever editor you're using is going to have this native format, um, this uh, thing where you can open it back up in the editor and edit things. Okay, and you want to save a version of that so it's an editable version of your image. So we're going to go ahead and save that as well. Remember, you can't use that anywhere else but back in Pixlr, but that's fine because we'll just come back here and use it. Okay, so let's go back to our Joomla site. And so we're back in our Joomla um, um, uh, our administrator area. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and click uh, Select. Okay, now notice I did a little bit of work here earlier. Okay, and the cool thing about these newer versions of Joomla is you just upload things right where you need them. So you don't have to go somewhere and upload an a image, right? You just upload your image right where you need it. So in this case, we're uploading right in this um, in this dialog for our uh, logo. We click Start Browse, then Start Upload. So notice now it's been uploaded, but it hasn't been selected. Okay, so now we go back and find the image. We click on that image, and this is the actual image URL. So we go from the top. We have to scroll down. This is the image URL. We always want to put a description in, um, at least. OK, and we're going to go ahead and click Insert. OK, so there it is. And now, whenever we make changes in the template manager, we're going to go ahead and click Save. Okay, so we click Save. And let's go take a look at it on our site. OK, so we're going to reload it. And there we go. OK, a seamless. Notice the color's right. It's pretty right. It's I can see a little bit of an of a of a background here, but that's okay for now. Um, okay, so we have our logo and it's been changed in Joomla. So there we have it. Uh, okay, so good luck using Pixlr, your administrative site for Joomla, and your Joomla homepage. Go ahead and change your logo.